Tonight, we'll take you to the Temple of Boom as I spent time setting up this show, listening to the mashup between Cypress Hill, Rage Against the Machine, and Public Enemy. They're the prophets of rage, and it's just enough of a taste of all three groups to give you that angsty, fight-the-man feeling of the late 90s. This is Short Time Shots, a look back at the day's scores and more in college wrestling from February 10th, 2018. I'm your host, Hall of Fame wrestling writer, broadcaster, and announcer, Jason Bryant, and I actually saw Rage perform live back in August of 1997. The opening acts, Atari Teenage Riot and the Wu-Tang Clan. Look it up. Hashtag facts. We can tell you that the women's team at Campbellsville will be going down Rodeo after capturing the school's first ever Women's Collegiate Wrestling Association National Championship on Saturday at Oklahoma City University. Powered by champions Grace Bullen and Kayla Miracle, the Lady Tigers took things down to the wire to rip the championship away from Simon Frazier in the event's final match. The stage was set for some dramas. The finals would start at 143 and end at 136, where Miracle would wait to see if she could make history. More on that in a bit. Simon Frazier, which is in Barnaby, Burnaby, Burnaby, yeah, out near uh, Pacific Northwest Vancouver area, British Columbia. There, it's a Canadian college in the NCAA Division II. They've had a women's program for a long time. They also have a lot of Americans on their team, including U.S. World Teamer Mallory Velty, who won her third WCWA title with a dominant win over Junior World Bronze Medalist Alexis. Porter of McKendry. Brittany Marshall, theme of warning, Brittany Marshall would fight the power and give Waylon Baptist a title with a 6-5 victory at 170 over Campbellsville's Mariah Harris. Marshall scored two as time expired to cap an exciting bout. Simon Frazier would overtake Campbellsville with back-to-back titles at 116 and 123. At 116, Abby Lloyd capped her career, winning her first WCWA title after finishing second the previous two years. At 123, Dominique Parrish, who was part of the U.S. U23 world team, topped unseeded teammate Alex Hedrick 5-4 to claim gold. Also of note with the team scoring there, if teammates are wrestling, bonus points thrown at the window. And since it's freestyle, there's one and a half for a tech, two for a fall. There is no major decision in freestyle wrestling. So with two weights left, Campbellsville and Simon Fraser would meet up at 130 pounds, with Simon Fraser holding a seven-point lead. That lead would shrink to one as freshman Grace Bullen, the Norwegian import, laid down another bomb track, pinning Nicole Deppa in two minutes and 17 seconds. Miracle would then step to the mat with her chance at four titles and the team title on the line. She gave up the first takedown to Grace Harbor's Desiree Zavala, but then used a leg turk to arch Zavala over for the fall. Mic drop, championship, lights out, Gorilla Radio. Miracle joins exclusive company, joining Oklahoma City's Emily Webster and Simon Fraser's Victoria Anthony and Helen Maroulis as four-time WCWA champions. This event has been around for 15 years, and Maroulis actually won her first title while attending Missouri Baptist. There are also a number of emotional moments throughout the course of the weekend, including Caitlin Hill of Campbellsville finally earning All-American honors for the first time and then promptly getting hit with a marriage proposal. Check this one out. It's all over Flow, USA Wrestling. It's all over Twitter. Get the tissues, folks. It's one of those moments that you just really can't put into words. So congratulations to Caitlin and and, and uh, her now fiancé. And that's one of those things that makes me feel really freaking old. I remember Caitlin Hill wrestling as a cadet in Fargo, and now her college career is over. Yeah, old man winter. Marina Doy's shot for a third individual championship came to an end as her twin sister Regina would claim the title at 101 pounds. The California Wonder Twins also made this moment distinctly theirs. You see, Marina had won the previous two titles, but the sisters had a goal to meet each other in the finals every year. Well, they, they that didn't happen. They went to King University in Bristol, Tennessee, all the way across the country. They're from like Kingsburg, California. Uh, so what happened this year is Marina actually met Regina in the finals. That was for the first time. And Marina forfeited to Regina. Marina's got titles. Regina didn't. This was important to both of them, and it was important for Marina that Regina had a championship. Uh, the pair then placed their center, their shoes on the center of the mat, signifying their retirement from wrestling. And uh, this is one of those things that I really wish I would have been there to see. Uh, I, I was so close to going this year. I was trying to work it out so I could do, I could do the announcing, and it just it didn't work out this year. But man, the just I again, there's not words that can put that into perspective. Maybe we'll talk to the uh, the Wonder Twins. Uh, later on this year on the program. Emmanuel's Cody Fowl would take the power back, winning her third title and first for her new school. She'd previously won two titles at Oklahoma City. Lindenwood Belleville's Niani Hill 
would capture the championship at 155 pounds, capping an unbeaten season. She's been tough, obviously, all year. Paige Baines of Grace Harbor would be the outstanding wrestler, winning the title at 191 pounds. She teched all four of her opponents in a combined three minutes and 32 seconds. Congrats again to Campbellsville coach Lee Miracle for their victory. You can go back to short time and listen to the full interview we did previewing the WCWA championships with Lee Miracle by going to matttookonline.com slash Lee Miracle. Moving over the men's side of things. Yeah, plenty of things to talk about. As an indoor record crowd of 15,998 saw number one Penn State top number seven Iowa 28-13 at a sold out Bryce Jordan Center. In case you're wondering, the rankings I use are the NWCA USA Today dual meet rankings. These are not based off tournament points. Thus, tournament points mean nothing to dual meets, which is 90% of Well, it's probably like 75% of your schedule. Anyway, rant over. Most notable win of the duel came in Iowa's favor. It was Bulls on Parade, or just Bull, as Alex Marinelli defended a Vincenzo Joseph inside trip attempt and body locked the returning NCAA champion to his back for a six-point sequence, leading to a Marinelli win at 165. Marinelli is still unbeaten as a freshman. It did give Iowa a shred of life, but uh, those shreds were short-lived as Mark Hall and Bo Nickel scored back-to-back falls in a minute to pretty much slam the door on any Hawkeye comeback hopes. Nick Neville's top Sam Stoll at heavyweight and Zane Train, Zane Rutherford, controlled Brandon Sorensen for the victory at 149 between number one and number two. Moving on, number 10, Cornell beat Penn 33-9 in Princeton 34-6 to to claim yet another regular season Ivy League championship. One notable there against Princeton came where super freshman Ben Darmstadt had to rally in the third period to beat Princeton's Pat Brucky. Darmstadt trailed by two in the third period, but then scored a reversal, a penalty point, and then got two near fall to earn the 9-6 victory. Number 13, Northern Iowa packed West Gym to the rafters and beat Iowa State 31-7 in the first meeting between these two teams as members of the Big 12. You and I joined the conference this season as an affiliate member after spending the last five years in the MAC. Also around D1, Oklahoma beat Edinburgh 19-16, Penn top Columbia 21-18, Stanford beat Oregon State 22-15 with Amar Desi getting a nice win 8-5 over Nathan Butler at heavyweight Davidson. Hey, won its second duel in a row, this time beating Division II Belmont Abbey 25-16. In Division III, there were a host of conference tournaments, but before we get to the regional weekend qualifying that's coming up, we've got two notables I want to throw at you, and this is kind of the thing that Short Time Shorts really is designed for. It's these nuggets, these facts, stats, things that are going to make you smarter in the morning, whether or not you wanted to know about it or not. First comes from Rochester Institute of Technology, or RIT, where freshman Caden Winters broke Matt Hamill's single-season school record for falls. Yes, that Matt Hamill. No, not Luke Skywalker, that's Mark Hamill. Matt Hamill, the deaf guy who won three NCAA Division III titles for the Tigers and who fought in the UFC and is in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame for the Medal of Courage. That, Matt the Hammer Hamill. Yeah, Caden Winters, yeah, he's now the new pin leader at RIT. Bravo, young man. He's 35 and 8 this year. Just a freshman. Let's keep an eye. Although, uh, some of his, he's got like three losses to, to guys from Ithaca this year. So, as long as he didn't bump into guys from Ithaca on the way to the Division Three Championships, he, he, he'll be okay. The other milestone goes to NYU's Raymond Jazikoff. He won two matches at the UAA Championships, which... It's just basically a tri-meet between the three schools that have wrestling in the UAA. Uh, That's the University of Chicago, Case Western Reserve University, and NYU. Jazikoff's two wins put him at 142 for his career, setting a new school record with a few weeks left in the season. Jazikoff is 41-5 and this season, and uh, that's a pretty good mark for Coach Bruce Haberly's Bobcats. That's today's Renegades of Funk. I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for short time and you've always got time to buy the Matt Talk Online Fan Guide, the Division One Preview. It's basically everything you need to know about the Division One Championships coming up in the City of the Rocks, Cleveland. Yep. Cleveland. Everything you want to know. Division One Preview Guide. MattTalkOnline.com slash FanGuide18. Use the promo code or offer code PODCAST. Save yourself five bucks. Trust me. 200 plus pages of wrestling gold. Genuine knowledge bombs all through this thing. Everybody that's bought it raves about it. Not a single return ever for somebody that was unhappy. Never has this been said, hey, this wasn't what I wanted. Can I get a refund? Not a single time. It's the fifth year I've done this thing, 
And trust me, I put my reputation on how badass this thing is. Yes, it's that good. You don't like it, I will give you a full refund. Guarantee. Satisfaction guarantee. Digital guide. Stats. Facts. Every single wrestler's record. Historical stuff. I've got stuff in there that's never been dug up or published before. You want this. You need to keep this. Retail is $19.99. Save you 5 bucks. $14.99 with the offer code PODCAST. Now, I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for short time. Congratulations, Campbellsville. Nice season. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. First time listening? Well, you can change that by going to matttalkonline.com slash get short time to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or listen on your favorite podcatcher at matttalkonline.com slash listen.